Hey all, welcome back. I've got a few different things going on in this episode, mainly around the back end. But let's start here. I need to swap this wheel over as the tyres dry rotted and not holding air anymore. While I'm here though, I can finally get around to fitting the new rear dampers. Out with the old. And in with the new. This isn't too hard a job, but it is fiddly, particularly by yourself. And with that done, I put the old spare on. It's rough, I know, but it'll do for now. I should probably have done this ages ago, but better late than never. It's time to get some wax in the cavities. I'm just going to spray this into every gap and cavity I can find on the car. It comes with a tube thingy as well, just what's needed to get right into everything. As you can see it takes a bit of aiming to get full coverage. I went round most of this at least twice. But that should keep everything protected for a while. The sills were next. It makes a mess but it's easy enough to clean up, just need a little bit of white spirits. Then I did the front end. It's slow work, but kind of satisfying in a way. I got a whole lot down inside the wings. I don't want those going rusty again. Finally, the underside. I'll be spraying some body wax under here as well, but I won't do that until the car's finished and back on the road. I don't want to deal with that kind of mess while I'm still working on it. And then I just left it to set. I got a few drips here and there, but nothing too bad. And now it's time to start on the boot. I put the lid on a little while back, but just roughly, and it wasn't aligned very well. So I loosened the hinges and spent a bit of time getting everything lined up properly. These can be adjusted from underneath like this, which will adjust the height as well as how far forward or back it sits. And you can adjust it on the boot lid as well. The trick here is getting it loose enough that you can move it around, but still tight enough that it doesn't slide all over the place. There's a bit of an act to it. But eventually, I was happy enough. I'll probably have to come back and adjust the height once the seal's in place and settled in, but I'll worry about that another day. For now, I've just tightened everything back up again.
The car had had a respray before, and whoever did the masking didn't do a great job. There's stuff like this everywhere. I tried a little test with some paint stripper, just to make sure it wouldn't take the chrome off as well. It's bad enough already. But luckily, it took the paint right off without messing up the chrome. So I went ahead and cleaned up the rest of it. And that's much better. The striker plate just needed a quick clean with a wire brush. As did the lock mechanism. The boot stay was covered in overspray as well. It's like they didn't even try. It was pretty crusty anyway, so I spent a bit of time on the wire wheel cleaning it all up. It came up pretty well. And then I fitted it straight to the car. It'll be nice not to have to hold the lid up with my shoulder every time now. And now it's time for the lights. I cleaned all these up a few years ago and sprayed the inside silver. It's not perfect, but it did make a difference and they're pretty bright. All that really needs doing now is adding in the new foam gaskets. These are readily available to buy new, so that's what I did. The number plate lights are in a sorry state. Covered in overspray again, clouded it up and held together with glue. I could never understand this. Surely it would have been easier to just take these off rather than try to mask them up. It's like two screws. No big deal though. New ones are available and they're cheap. And lastly, these marker lights. I don't use them as lights, and they're actually broken anyway. But they still work as reflectors, and they look better than the blanking plates you usually see. They just needed a bit of cleaning up. And some very careful buffing to get the scratches out. This works well, but you can easily overheat and melt plastic on this, so you have to move fast. I couldn't find any gaskets for these, so I just made up my own. And then I fitted the lights to the car. I'll deal with the number plate lights a little bit later. I've got some other bits I need to do before that. The last things to clean up were these cover plates. They're looking a little battered. So I sanded them down just to get the dirt and flaking paint off.
And because there was rust showing in places, I put a bit of rust converter on them. Before priming. And painting. This is the rubber seal from the filler neck cover. It looks like mice have had a tromp on it at some point. New ones aren't available, but it's just foam rubber. I made up my own one. I'm not sure the other cover ever had a gasket, I just made one up anyway. Not the neatest job in the world, but it'll work. They then got fitted to the cart with some new screws and spire nuts. Time to add in some sound deadening now. I cleaned up the sides first. And then put on the new sound deadening panels. For just one small panel, they do make a difference. And then I put a new aerial in. If you were wondering, that barking sound you can hear is just our friendly local deer. Now it's time to deal with the number plate lamps. I need to sort the wiring out first. Although this wiring's probably okay, I'll be replacing it all with new wires. I'm using thin wall wire here, so although it's thinner, it's still the same capacity as the old wire.
and then that got fitted into the boot lid. I don't know where the connector is going to end up being, so I just gave myself plenty of extra wire. Before I fitted the lights, I thought it would be easier to fit the lock first. There's not a lot of room there and those holes might come in handy. So I fitted the striker plate first. The lock is just held in with a spring clip. I think someone just made this one. It sort of works but it's fiddly to get in place. New ones aren't available, so I'll just make it work. And that's it. It looks loose, but that's just the lock itself. Not much I can do about that. And then the lock mechanism was fitted. I wanted to check the lock actually worked before I closed the boot lid. But it all seems fine. Moment of truth. And it's all good. So now the lights can finally go in. And the hole the wires pass through got a grommet. A quick test of the lights. And they work just fine. And then I got the new boot seal fitted. Let's get that spare tyre out of the way. And we're all done here. I've got to come back to do the lining and of course the wiring, but for now I'm going to call it good. So let's close this up. Now, where did I leave the keys? Oops, I left them in the ignition. That was careless. And that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like it. If you want to see more, please subscribe. For now though, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. See ya!